born out of necessity, really, because Lotus had invented ground effect. Colin Chapman's Lotus team have worked on their aerodynamics to achieve so-called ground effects, sucking the car to the track and thus allowing more grip and higher cornering speeds. Lotus's success is a challenge to all the teams. Murray urgently needs inspiration, and he finds it in the rule book with a loophole in the wording. The regulations state that a movable device, primarily used to give an aerodynamic advantage, is not allowed. Murray therefore designs a large fan which, he can argue, is primarily to cool the engine, but with the crucial side effect of sucking the car to the road. And I did the sums, and I had to do them several times because I couldn't believe the downforce multiplied by the number of square inches under the car. You know, it was just an astronomical figure. I stuck a bloody great big fan on the back of the car, driven off the gearbox, and sealed the entire motor car to the ground. So you had this whole area under suction. The difficult bit, in three months, we had to redesign the whole car and come up with a fan that would survive nearly 8,000 revs. That was 18 inches diameter, without falling to pieces. And all the early ones exploded. The Swedish Grand Prix at Anderstorp and Murray's secret weapon is unveiled for the first time. I think for the <laughs> majority of the teams, it was a novelty. When they first saw it on the, on the Thursday, word went around that obviously we had this car and it had a fan on the back of it. I remember Colin Chapman immediately saying it was illegal. And every time the car came in, and in fact, even when we raced, uh, we had a, a dustbin lid that we used to actually put over the fan. The fan car could get as much downforce standing still as it could going at 180 miles an hour, which meant you could get a 2G standing start and you could go around hairpin bends just as quick as you could around 150 mile an hour bend, so it had a massive advantage. Well, nobody took a lot of notice of it until it started. I think people thought it was going to be quick and they were right, but we tried to make sure that it didn't look quick. Bernie made the drivers qualify on full tanks because he didn't want to be too fast. The other teams, led by Colin Chapman and Lotus, are outraged by Brabham's huge advantage, which they consider to be illegal. There's one thing that stuck in my mind about that car was all of the other drivers who had to follow it, complaining that they would just like, had a face full of dust and rubbish and anything else that this thing swept up off the racetrack. Mario would come in and say, hell, man, that car, it's chucking rocks. I'm just like, a, you know, I have to duck, I have to, it's going to kill. I know we were getting blasted tremendously. The obvious thing is if something you think is working better, you try to use whatever excuse, you know, to say it's not good. <laughs> Nicky Lauda wins the race by 34 seconds but the fan car is doomed. The other constructors, particularly Lotus and Tyrrell, lent on Bernie heavily to withdraw the car. We were inside the regulations, for sure, but Colin said, if we don't mind, everyone will be doing this, and it's a little bit crazy, because there may be no limit in the end. Bernie came to see me and said, look, this is my position. We can run the car till the end of the year, will almost certainly win the championship, but I think the Constructors Association is more important. So with, I was very, very pissed off, I have to say, but I did withdraw the car. 